This episode is brought to you by cloudpano.com. Adding more revenue to your business is simple. Offer more value. With Cloudpano, you can create 360-degree tours and present them to your clients quickly and efficiently. It only takes five minutes to create a VR tour with cloudpano.com and your clients will be thrilled. You can now avoid monthly fees with their new lifetime license option. For a limited time, you can save $100 on a lifetime license using code SHOOTINGSPACES at checkout. Join the movement and join cloudpano.com today. This is Shooting Spaces with Rich Baum and Brian Berkowitz. Hello and welcome to Shooting Spaces. Brian Berkowitz here from New York. And Rich Baum from beautiful Sacramento, California. And thank you all for tuning in. Beautiful Sacramento. I guess your weather's getting a little warmer then, huh? No, it's, you know, we've got a wonderful, we haven't had much snow this year, but it's been beautiful. It's beautiful. Blue skies, crisp. It's going to be 65 today. So, Do you get sorry a lot of for snow all in other, Sacramento? No, I mean, up in the mountains. Oh, we're, okay. we're an hour from, I'm an hour from Squaw Valley. So it's, uh, it's, uh, we haven't had snow in a month. So, but, uh, well, I don't want to jinx it, but we've had no snow here in New York this winter. Well then, hopefully, but, but who cares? No. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, no, Not it's been beautiful. Ski, I guess or yeah. snowboard, but yeah, cool. Things are picking up, huh? Spring is uh, spring is approaching. So it is, and it's just been absolutely crazy because people are change. I don't know if it's the season, but people are changing. Oh, I, I can't do it. They want to push it back, and this and that. And I'm really a tip for everybody out there only because I know that I need to do my own tip is make sure when someone changes a date that you move, put in the new date, but you don't take off the old date because man, I've got to get a better system out there because I just last night, I had a couple of things confirming. Oh, by the way, I also have really gotten into uh, a day before the shoot, I'm sending out a confirmation that That's we're all idea. good yeah. there. Oh, it, it's been saving my ass. But like last night, I'm like, well, what do you mean it's Tuesday? No, it's supposed to be Monday. And we're texting back and forth. And and it turned out that the agent, it was her mistake. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I also always say, well, it could totally be my mistake because I've, I've done that a few times. Yeah. But um, I'm now having to juggle schedules and everything and it's really tough. So. Welcome to the life of a real estate photographer. Mm, yeah, got a bunch of uh, meetings out lately for um, new construction um, businesses. We're going to shoot a pizza parlor on Thursday. Awesome. Um, uh, mainly shoot a pizza oven. Kind of cool. No, that's exciting. And, uh, Look, uh, you know I've been doing commercial work for a while. Yeah. So there's a lot of money there, a lot more money than residential real estate. And yeah. it's fun. It keeps you creative on your toes, lets you do some different unique things and get some different perspectives than just shooting a living room or a kitchen. So. Although I, I, uh, I asked the guy, so what do you want to have? We had, me we had a meeting this week and he found me off of uh, Instagram. So by the way, Instagram's getting your work, but here's what happened. We were sitting there talking introductions. I'm like, so hey, why are you, I've seen the work that your other photographers done and it's been good, but why are you, um, why are you changing photographers? And the first thing comes out of his mouth is price. And I'm like, Okay, you know, I don't think that's a good thing, but I can try and work with you and see if it, it was it was kind of high for what they were providing. So I'm just going to see if I can make something work for myself. But that might be a, a sign in the in the long run that it may not be a good good fit for us because uh, you know you don't want to do it just because of price. But they're also like the the different style and different look I provide. So. Well, and I also want to remind everyone our webinars right around the corner. So we're, I guess, a week or two away, something like that. And, um, you know, we've, we still have some spaces open. So yeah. as of today, recording this. So, um, yeah, if you want to, you know, have an hour and a half, two hours of just straight up Rich Baum editing real estate photography, definitely join in. And we've spoken, you know, tremendously about all the stuff we're going to talk about. And we're still fine tuning our topics, but it's going to be a fun night, just learning tons of different techniques, window pulls and flambient and 
you know, let the ambient do the heavy lifting, all, all, all your different techniques that you're known for. All the hits. All the, yeah. all the hits, the special sauces, yeah. everything else we got. Yeah. So. <laughs> and it'll be fun. It'll really be in-depth. It'll be um, a really great educational tool for, uh, for most all photographers. But, uh, yeah, check it out. And it's a, a great value. And it's going to be like a, just almost like a, a private coaching session. So it's a really good. Private coaching session with 99 other people. Yeah, but, but uh, uh, it, it doesn't work that way. It didn't, Brian's going to be fielding all the questions, and it's going to be a lot of fun and really educational. Making sure you keep on pace. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah. And then, you know, just like all our other webinars, if you watch live, it's going to be twenty nine ninety five. So for, for $30, I mean, it's a no brainer mm -hmm. for an hour and a half, two hours of, yeah, absolutely. as you want to call it, group coaching um, with the ability to ask questions and, and, you know, get real time answers to things that have been bothering you about the editing <clears> process. And as we also spoke about, we're going to provide all the source images that you use um, in the webinar. So people will be able to practice and work alongside you and, and, and then utilize these techniques on their own stuff. So it's going to be pretty exciting stuff. So And you'll be able to watch the webinar after the fact. If you, if you purchase the webinar, you can right. see it anytime you want. And if you haven't been able, if you weren't able to make it, you can also um, get it after the fact. So it's a win-win. It's a Okay. Sure. Shootingspaces.net slash editing. Pretty simple. Mm -hmm. I'll take you right to the registration page and yeah. you go on there and we're going to send out reminders, you know, a week before and a day before and all that stuff. So you don't forget that it's coming up. So uh, March 26th at 9.30 PM Eastern, we found that to be the best time between everyone across all coasts. And obviously we know we can't appease everybody because our webinars have you know, been, we've had registrations from people all over the world for that matter. So, you know, for those people who are in Europe or other sides of the country, we apologize that, you know, it's going to be the middle of the night for you. But as we said, you will be able to watch it after if you register. So don't let that um, dissuade you from registering live and, and saving a couple of bucks on the live option. Yeah, and if you're in England, you'll be watching it at 3 a.m. So, exactly. You know, it's, it's, uh, so what we got going on today, Brian? We got another Ask the Guys, uh, a pretty interesting one, something <clears throat> we've never covered before. So let me play it for you. Here we go. Hey, guys, this is Holt Webb with Holt Webb Art and Photography. I'm based out of uh, Trenton, Georgia, which is in North Georgia, about 20 minutes outside of Chattanooga, Tennessee. I specialize in architecture, some real estate, portraiture, and uh, I'll also do my own artwork. Um, my question is about travel, sort of. Um, I've done a lot of traveling around the country to do projects for clients. And I've always wondered, you know, what causes a client to fly a photographer in from far away as opposed to using somebody locally who's equally as good? I mean, I love traveling around the country and it's great money. It's a great experience and a fantastic way to see the world. But if I were a client hiring somebody to photograph my project, I would probably hire somebody local who's just as good unless I had a strong relationship with somebody outside my area. So I'm, I know this is long winded. I'm just wondering what causes a client to make that decision to uh, fly somebody in from out of their region as opposed to using somebody equally good who's local. Thanks guys. All right. Thank you. Holt Webb, which is an awesome name. Holt I, I want, I'm going to put this one, this one on you, Brian, cause I want to know. <laughs> well, you want to know the I, answer? <clears throat> well, I mean, I, I think I'm, I'm gonna, not, I'm not really, I'm not really the one to answer. I met, I was going to answer, you know, I can totally answer on, uh, driving and transportation and, and but, but or, I don't think that's regular. any different than his question. I know he mentioned specifically flying, which I've done yeah. for, but, but I know you've told me before you've traveled two, three, four hours for shoots mm -hmm. um, via car. So I don't think it's, it's any different. You know, if I'm in New York and you know, a client wants me to go up to Boston, it's a four and a half hour drive, but I might just say to them, yeah. Hey, throw me on an airplane. It's only 40 minutes. Okay. So I don't okay. think it's much different, but you know, I think, Holt kind of answered his own question at the end when he says, when he spoke about it being a comfort level thing. And I think that's the biggest factor into that is, you know, if you have a client that you've, if you have a client that you've been working with for um, however many years for whatever reason, and there's a comfort level and you know how they work, that's, that's, I think the biggest factor with them willing to spend some extra money to have you um, go somewhere. And, <clears throat> 
it it really is okay i i totally can morph into this mode and uh it it isn't i i don't like uh, be honest with you hold i love your question i loved everything about it but one thing i don't like is when you said someone that's just as good as me because that's irrelevant that mm -hmm. that is not even remotely you are special brian's special rich is special when people hire me I don't look at there as good as me. There's no way you can be me. Um, uh, people hire me because of me. My work might not even be as good as my somebody that you may think my work, oh, my, my work is not as great as Brian, but they wanted me because they just wanted me. And there was something about me that they they – they found that they wanted it could be many things it could the be liability experience. it could you don't know what's going on in that other relationship <clears throat> it could appear that they're better than you or as good as you and and they're they're in the neighborhood so i think that a lot of people too especially you're you're basically talking though um what i what i would gather was you're more talking about higher end jobs and when you get into that these companies, especially national companies, they don't, you know, it's, it's pennies for them to send somebody. I mean, like Brian, you're working for Gucci. I mean, shit, they, they send you anywhere and it's no big deal for them. And no they like deal. working with you, obviously. I mean, it's no big deal to the point where, you know, I had a, excuse me, I had a Saturday evening shoot for them and they wanted to fly me out like two or three hours before the shoot. And I was like, I don't really feel comfortable with that. And I was also going to Toronto and I, you know, I knew Matt Stallone was there and all that. So I wanted to have a little extra time there. And I said to them, Hey, can you fly me out Friday the day before I'll cover my hotel for that extra night? And they said, eh, don't worry, we'll take care of it for you. No problem. So yeah, when you're talking about them spending big money, mm -hmm. they have all this money, but I think it's a comfort level. Look, I've been shooting for Gucci for a year plus now. And you know, it's a process when you have to go out and find a new photographer, no matter what the company is. And, you know, even my process with a company like Gucci, for instance, was, you know, the, the first job was a really small job and they, they keep getting bigger and bigger until they, you know, until they're comfortable with you. And the first job is kind of like a trial, whatever you want to call it, and, and make sure they're comfortable with you. And from my perspective, learning what they want and how their workflow is with previous photographers they work with. And once you spend time establishing that whole workflow and that relationship, you know, for a company that's that big or even a company that's not that big, you know, what's a, you know, an extra thousand or two to just send the photographer out that they've worked with, they know is going to deliver what they, what you want, what they want to be delivered to them. And they know that they can trust you. They don't have to, you know, worry about it and all that. So, um, yeah, there's definitely, you know, a comfort factor there because every client, you know, has, a sp there's something they want out of you that they've worked with you before to establish, you know, for instance, um, you know, <clears throat> I'll mention Gucci again, because we were just talking about it. When I, when I shoot for them, I have to proof all my images to them that same day. That's just part of our relationship. Um, no editing. I just proof them the raw files the same day. And they go through all the proofs and they let me know which ones they want to edit. And then I go in and I have a couple of days to edit it or whatever it is, depending on their deadlines. So, but, you know, they know that I know that workflow. They don't have to tell me after the shoot, I have to get the images up to them in the next three hours. Like they, at this point, that's already established. And I know that that's how everything works. They don't want to have to start interviewing new photographers in different locations for, maybe a one-off shoot that they might never come back here again. It's not, it's not worth it to them, you know, because that interview process and that whole process, it, it takes time too. And, you know, when you're doing it via email or in different countries, it can take a couple of days, weeks, whatever it is, you know, if they want to call references and, and all that stuff, you know, but it's funny on the, on the contrary side of things, I did a shoot last week, commercial shoot, coincidentally the same shoot I spoke about last time where my laptop broke, but I did a shoot for a, an architectural company based out of Vermont and they did a project here in New York and they wanted to hire somebody local here versus sending a photographer down. Why? I'm not sure, to be honest. I didn't ask them obviously, but it was a process. It, it was a probably a six to eight week process, me getting hired to do the job between um, the initial email um, me going back and forth, finding out what they wanted to do and, you know, what they were looking for. Um, at that point, sending them a proposal once they had the proposal and they were okay with my pricing, then they wanted to vet and they, they asked me for some references. Um, I sent them some references and I know they call those references because the references told me, Hey, we got a call from this company. So it was a process. It was six day process. And I feel like 
it's easier for, I mean, it's easier for a company to not have to deal with that whole process. For some reason, this company didn't want to, but it's easier for a company to not have to deal with the whole process than yeah. to um, start again. Now, this architectural company based in Vermont, they have offices all over the country. I think there's one or two in the West Coast. There's, you know, one or two in Texas. There's out here in Vermont. Um, there's one here in New York City. So, I'm not sure exactly what they do. I would gather based on what they did with me that they just hire local photographers for all their projects. Um, but it seems like from my perspective, based on my experience with them, that's a lot of work and a lot of extra work um, where they might be able to just save a significant amount of time. You know, time is money. Just having their one photographer that they just fly around because at the end of the day, you know, I feel and it's like, a consistency and look. It's not correct. only it's all not only there's so many factors, but I mean you certainly don't want to hire another person if you've got a like these big corporations. Even with uh, like uh, Coca Cola Red, the red has to be a specific color. When I used to do commercials and movies uh, with these products and promotions, they were very very picky, and this is just a drop in the bucket for a lot of these companies. So it's it's not what we would think on our own terms. This episode of Shooting Spaces is brought to you by HD Photo Hub. With modern marketing tools for your clients and a powerful back office to help you stay organized and efficient, HD Photo Hub is the secret weapon of successful real estate photographers everywhere. When you register with promo code Shooting Spaces, you'll get a free total marketing kit for your first property. Check them out at hdphotohub.com. HD Photo Hub, where great photos become powerful marketing. That's hdphotohub.com. But I think you nailed the consistency. I mean, if you're hiring a different photographer from mm -hmm. cities all over the country, I mean, it's almost impossible for impossible. all the work to look exactly the same. And um, I guess it just depends on the branding that that company wants to put out there, um, having consistent work across all their projects or just, you know, having different looks. But um I personally think it's better to have consistent branding and have all your work look the same and uh, go from there. You know, if I want to go back to that um, Gucci example, for instance, they have one photographer <coughs> who they have a contract with who does all their travel work. Um, the only reason I, I did some travel work for them was because they had two openings in, in the same weekend. So, but other than that, you know, this guy does all their travel work. So they know that all their work from all over the country or all over North America too, for that matter, because they go to Canada is going to look the same from this one other photographer and everything he's going to produce is going to be consistent. So mm -hmm. I think that's, a, that plays a big factor. Yeah. And, and I think uh, I want to chime in here about, since we're talking about travel, I don't think have we ever done a podcast or added travel fee on on our podcast, Brian? We've never really spoken about it. I okay. Mean, well, let's speak about it. What do you do when you're doing real estate? You know, are, are you charging mileage? Are you charging travel? And it's something you really got to think about because, um, you know, once you start going into driving, um, you know, most, I, I think a, a really normal uh, amount of distance is 30 miles radius from my house. Mm -hmm. And I will go look the other way because uh, contrary to what we were just talking about, contrary to that, I would say that if I am shooting in Meadow Vista, which is, is just outside, it's maybe 35 miles, um, I will look the other way at the extra five miles because the agent that's calling me gives me work. They're from that area, and I know that they're, uh, it's not appropriate giving them, uh, charging them mileage. Now, if they wanted to go the other way, I'd totally feel great with it. And there's a few ways to go about this. And you really got to take it as, yes, you might lose a contract or you might lose a shoot for um, mileage. But if you do, if it's only, you know, if it's 20, 30 bucks in mileage, um, what the heck, forget it. I mean, why, it's not even worth uh, dealing with it. Um, and, and if you can't pay me that, I don't want, I don't want to work for you. But there's many ways to do it. You can go with government mileage, which is somewhere around 59, 52 cents mm -hmm. a mile, which is always a good way. I charge more than that for mileage. But but if, if I was to say that if you told somebody, well, I've got to charge a mileage because it's out the, th the 30 mile radius. And if they ask you, well, how much is mileage? And if you just said, well, it's whatever government rate is, that kind of goes in and I call it easy. It's more palatable mm -hmm. than coming up with some other number. Now, I think personally, I've gone with the last few years, I go with per hour. 
and I, I think I charge 65 or 75 an hour. And that is yeah, easier for me to, to I, work I think with. that's better because when you do government mileage, where do you draw the line? So for instance, let's say you're, you have a 30 mile radius, but you know, you're charging them 50, uh, just to round it off 50 cents you know, per mile over based on government fees. And if you're traveling- No, it's not over. It's once you go into me, and again, I'm not a lawyer. Um, when you go past the 30 miles, it starts charging from your house. Oh, okay. So it's not, it, it, I don't think that is how it works. And I could be wrong. Somebody about their mic going, oh, Rich, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. But for me, it's once I go past, if it's the more than 30 miles, it is going to be the government mileage or whatever it is from the my door to your door. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I do something similar, but I just charge by county. Um, so if, if I'm in the county that I'm in, and my county is pretty big here on Long Island, then it's my regular pricing. If I go, you know, one county east, it's another pricing. And then if I go one county west, which is New York City, Manhattan, uh, Queens, Brooklyn, all those, that's a different price as well. Um, only because, you know, when, even though I'm kind of like right in the middle. So if I go west or east, you, should, you would think it would be the same. But um, New York City gets a lot trickier with parking and traffic and all that. So it becomes... I, I, I've always amazed when you, you know, I, I've worked on a movie and I've lived in New York City and I just can't imagine doing a real estate shoot in New York City where, where it could cost you $100 to park your car. I mean, that you've got to tack that on to... Um, well, into, into Manhattan, I take a train. I, you know, I've said this before. I post the pictures on the train. I, I don't even drive because, as you said, it's not worth it. So, yeah, I mean, there's a, you know, a $25 train ride and... and Taxi and, ride or Exactly, Uber. whatever it is. Um, um, okay. but you know, I charge, I charge enough to cover that extra time and, um, costs. So mm -hmm. make sure that I cover myself. Um, and then, you know, if I go to, you know, another county out here on Long Island, Suffolk County, which is one county to the East, well, there's only two counties here on Long Island, but, um, then I just charge a flat fee over that also just, um, you know, just based on time. And, you know, sometimes it works out great because, you know, I'll be in the first town over the borderline and sometimes I'll be going out to the Hamptons where it's two hours east. And, you know, I guess it just balances itself out. Sometimes, you know, you're close and sometimes you're further away. It's just, it is what it is. And um, really, I, I, I think that uh, it just, it's case by case. And it's another thing is um, why I have, I'm in the, in the Northern California area and I have a lot of my territory is the foothills of the Sierras down south and down up north. Mm -hmm. And honestly, there are some photographers and they're getting a lot more photographers lately. And I think it's my fault. I've been teaching every, all my competition, but that's okay. And I just think that, that I know that if it's an area that's an hour south of me or an hour and a half in the foothills, there's just really not anybody else. And there may be somebody else, but there's not that many people that are uh, at my level and that will do it. So I am, I am, have no problem charging money and I have no, they have no problem paying it because it's just like, Hey, you don't have the choice, you know? So it, it really depends on where you live and what you're doing. And, and please don't take any of this advice as, as the Bible, you know, this is there, it all varies. And it's all something that, what are you, you know, it also depends on your quality, your pricing, your, I mean, there's so many variables. So it's not, but there's not one answer there, but you should figure it out and have the balls to say, or the, the gumption to say, to stick by your travel fee and, and put it out there go, Hey, I've got to, you know, I've got to pay for this. And they may look at it like, well, the plumber's not charging me mileage. Well, if you want to put me next to your plumber, then maybe we're not a good fit together. And that's something that you really got to come up with yourself and find out what works for you. And, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's just different for different situations. So there's not one answer uh, fits all. Well, let me ask you, Rich, do you charge the same fees be, except, for, except for the travel rate, meaning is your regular shooting fee the same and then you just have your travel rates on top of that? Or do you charge a higher shooting fee itself when you're traveling? No, I wouldn't charge a higher shooting fee. But um, tending when I go down south, I'm more shooting Airbnb, Airbnb so it's a totally different pricing. Mm -hmm. um, but no, no, not really. If it was real estate and I'm charging mileage, 
um, I'm not going to charge the difference. You know, my thing though too is I look at the big picture. I look at what is the overall project. If my agent is lives out lives like at the 30 mile range and her territory can go further that way. They understand I'm coming from where I'm coming from, and it's a 30-minute drive to them anyway. But I look at the big picture. Like one of my new, newer clients, I've been shooting a lot for her, and I have to deal with this. Uh, 50% of the houses are at least 30 miles away to 35, 40 miles away. But it's okay with me because I'm looking at the big picture, and I'm enjoying working with this person. I'm making some pretty good coin with that and uh, getting some good business. So I'm, I'm, and it's, vice, it's both directions. It's both ways. So yeah. I'm okay looking the other way. Uh, you know. I would love it if uh, 30 miles took me 30 minutes out here in New York. It'd be a whole different ball game. I couldn't even charge by miles because, you know, I'm 15 miles from Manhattan and it can be a two hour drive. So, <laughs> you know, that's a tough one. Okay. That's something when I'm saying a uh, two hour drive, I'm literally going by MapQuest or Google mm-hmm. Maps. I'm saying well, what the Ma- average MapQuest, time would be. Wow. You went well, retro yeah, today. they're still there. Yeah, <laughs> I'm old. It's okay. But no, I think that um, you know that wouldn't really be great. Is if I was doing a shoot in San Francisco, where that might be harder for me to because San Francisco is probably just as bad as LA is just as bad as New York, mm-hmm. uh, different but just as bad can be just as bad. So I think that I don't know how I would be able to charge per hour. If I knew it was going to be the shoot was that they wanted at five o'clock and I knew it was going to take me twice as long as the map of the uh, Google maps uh, time. So I don't know what to tell you there. That's something you'd have to figure out. And, yeah. You just have to figure out. That's why I do by County. You just have to kind of figure out what works best based on, you know, your pricing and, you know, how the traffic is and the, the driving situation is in your area because out here it's not pleasant. But in regular real estate terms, uh, just day-to-day real estate photography, I can almost guarantee that if I was charging uh, 50 to $100 uh, travel fee to do for this agent, I don't think they would stick with me. I think they would find somebody else that may not even be as good as me, but you know, it works for them. They look at the big picture too. And uh, so what's it, what's it worth? So I think shooting something that's high end, like a Gucci project, and then shooting something like uh, just a 2000 square foot house for a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars is two different things. You know? oh, it's a completely different ball game. And I think, I think that's where Holt was going with that. Uh, not that he he mentioned this specifically, but I think he was referring to the higher end architectural mm-hmm. and design Absolutely. work. Um, yeah. You know, because there are some cases which I've heard where people get flown around for real estate work, but it's it's probably it's probably rare. It's probably not um, a frequent thing, be, just because of the rates that kind of go around for real estate photography. I would imagine there's not as much traveling for that versus designer work or architectural work. So, but yeah, I mean, just to just to go back, give a quick summary to hold i think it's just it's just the comfort level and just you know the client just being comfortable with what you're going to deliver and them not having to worry about it is worth the extra money to them so absolutely and remember um some companies um it's a drop in the bucket it's just, uh, they don't even consider it. My wife works for a big company that uh, they have a whole department just for travel. So mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's like, you're just one little entity. You're like the smallest, cheapest entity of their cog, you know? So not to, not to diminish what you're doing, Halt, but <laughs> you're, you're this big anyway. I think we did a good one on there. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. I, again, don't, don't, don't go, uh, don't take these and then you didn't get work and you lost clients. And then you get mad at us because, uh, this is take at your own risk, man. Uh, but it's just something like you've got to figure out what works for you and what do you feel comfortable with? Because again, if you just like taking a lower bid, if you, if you go to longer distance and you get in traffic and it takes you two hours to do something, you're not getting extra paid and you, you can get pissed off and then you're, you're pissed off at the agent and you're pissed off when you're doing the job, that never works. So do, you, do what you need to do to be, make yourself happy. Make yourself cool. feel good. All right. Well, that was short, but sweet. So with that, I want to remind everyone to submit your Ask the Guys questions. We always can use some more and Mm -hmm. uh, hold for submitting that. Um, I don't have your website in front of me, but we'll make sure to put it in the show notes. Um, This way anyone can look up some of your work if you want to... um, Take, check out Holt's, um, Holt's work. We'll, put, we'll post the link. And Holt, put, be sure to add in your email address because we want people calling you up or emailing you, um, asking you how much did you charge and are you, is, was it good for you? So that's just part of what we, we offer. 
So I'm no, just joking. Just joking. look, you know, I'm rich for the travel work. I also, I charge my regular fees. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't, my, my fees aren't different, but I do charge travel days. So and most people understand it. They're, yeah. they're, the businesses understand it's just business. So if exactly. they don't understand it, maybe you shouldn't be working with that person. Yeah, so no, it's when really I, when I get inquiries about traveling, which happens every so often, they say, what are your travel rates? And they say, mm-hmm. here's my rate sheet. They're not any different. I just charge for any travel day that I'm not shooting. I charge a half a day rate. And that's or it. I would charge a full day rate myself. Oh. I, I, traveling right. is traveling. I mean, maybe I'm when I do a job. When I do a job like that, though, that's something we didn't discuss. You got to remember the time, the downtime. You mm-hmm. got to remember the scouting. You got to remember all that stuff. You got to figure it out. So, but I don't get that opportunity to uh, charge that that often. So, well, we'll make sure that happens. We'll get you up there. Yeah. Okay, man. Great. All right, cool. So, yeah. Shooting Space is telling you to to subscribe to our podcast, and uh, really, we enjoy uh, all of our subscribers. And uh, check out shootingspaces.net, our website, where you can get all the webinars, and you can get all the training, and all the all the good stuff, and articles from some really talented photographers. And uh, Brian, what, anything else? I mean, oh, ask the guys. Yeah. I started saying that. I think we got we we got sidetracked. But yes, yeah, okay. so you're asked the guy's question. Go to our website. We have a little widget up there. Record it on your phone and email it to us. Uh, you can even text it to us if you have our number. Um, but yeah, get get us that ask the guy's question. No matter how okay. uh, how you want to get to us, we can take that recording. So okay. And as you're driving to go shoot some spaces, no, that's not working out. Just go out and shoot some spaces. Okay. See y'all later. Bye. Yeah, if you're going to try something new, you got to try it bef- <laughs> before you're live. That's not how I roll, baby. It's all, <laughs> it's all off the top, man, and people understand it. No, but go shoot some spaces and go have a great day. Are you ready to step in front of your competition? Invest in the IMS5 camera system and offer your real estate clients the all-in-one property listing package. It supports video, drone, and still image capture as well. With iGuide, your real estate photography business becomes a complete real estate marketing service without having to change your workflow. Visit goiguide.com and enter promo code SSWINTER2020 in the reference number section to get your first three standard iGuides free when you purchase the iGuide IMS5 camera system. This has been Shooting Spaces. For more episodes, visit shootingspacespodcast.com and visit our education site at shootingspaces.net.